Hi, welcome to Quirky Queen's Journals. My name's Kirsten. So today I am doing a sort of beginner's guide to using the jelly plate, but it's more based on my own approach that I took when I started using the jelly plate. So I think the jelly plate is just such a fun way to express yourself. And I also think there's a huge potential for experimentation on it and finding new ways to be creative. And I chose these three paintings to put at the beginning of the video because I've actually had these three paintings in an exhibition and they were all done in the jelly plate and they all have a YouTube video and I will link the videos in the description but it's just to show you that the jelly plate is so useful, but you can complete full works of art on it as well. So cleaning the jelly plate. So you can see here, these jelly plates look quite dry. They've got a lot of grungy paint on them. And to be honest with you, I'll on, you often use them when they have got dried in paint from previous pools on them as well. But sometimes you do want them clean to start with. So I am using baby oil and a wet wipe here. Um, I like the baby oil to add some softness and take the dryness away of the jelly plate. Um, when you have put baby oil or a mineral oil... You can buy food grade mineral oil in pharmacies. Um, when you put that on the jelly plate, it does help give a cleaner pull. It helps the paper remove itself from the jelly plate with the paint. So I am also using sellotape because that just helps take off the, the stubborn bits that don't come off, come off with the baby oil and the wet wipe and then I just go over it again um, you can also use like washing up liquid and water as well um, people have different ways of cleaning them but to be honest I often just don't bother cleaning them it just depends I've started using a lot of mixed media so in those circumstances, it's sometimes better to give it a good clean. But oiling it once in a while. Um, some people oil it after every use. I have started oiling it probably before I use it every time. Um, it just helps. It helps you give a bit. It helps give you a better pull of the paint off the jelly plate. I'm using it, that's actually a glass chopping board um, that I'm using to sit it on. I find that quite easy to work with. Um, you, some people have plexiglass, acrylic blocks, or you can just sit it on the table. It's just that it does leave a sort of oily residue, so I wouldn't sit it on a, a wooden table or anything. And the jelly plate, you can use both sides. So... I've cleaned both sides and I'm just picking off the last little bits with the sellotape here. So, to roll the paint onto the gel plate to use brayers, um, I don't wash mine. I just, um, once the paint builds up, I will remove it between the handle and the roller using a scoring tool or just something that you can take the paint out with um, and I will also give it a wee nudge at the sides if it's sticking and then the paint itself once that builds up you can just pull that off um, in layers you'll see it in a minute and that's really how I deal with my brayers um, some people do wash them it's entirely up to you. When I started jelly printing, I used cheaper paints and cheaper papers. So there's two main types of acrylic 
paint. There's fluids and heavy body. My preference is heavy body because that's what I'm used to. Although I have recently purchased fluid paints, um, but I haven't really mastered them yet. So my biggest um, tip is use cheap products. So cheap paper, tissue paper, book pages, printer paper, um, found paper, packaging paper. Um, now obviously better quality papers are a bit easier to use, but you will use so many sheets of paper that you know, you don't want to be just putting out practice gel prints on papers that cost a lot of money. So I'm just showing you heavy body paint um, on tissue paper, printer paper and book paper here. You can get slightly different effects of how the paint looks. You know, the texture of the paint when it's dried on these different types of paper. Different papers have different absorbances as well. So with the tissue paper, that it doesn't absorb any of it really. So it all just sits on the top. The printer paper, you can see, it, it, it has a slight more amount of absorbency. Now these are just thin, that's just a thin cheap notebook. And it's just to show you, you know, that you can use that. And this is a, a book that I started doing jelly prints in as well. So cheap books are a great thing to practice on. Um, you know, books that are damaged or that you have no use for anymore. So you can purchase print making papers. Um, some people like to use rice papers calligraphy papers and um, I find mixed media paper is very good to use. You can get quite a lot of layers onto the one sheet of paper. Now this book page here is for a, a book, a fiction paperback book. It's quite a thick piece of paper and it picked up well. You can see the plates almost clean. Now the next sheet I use is it's thinner and it's older and it takes longer to pick it up from the jelly plate and it leaves more behind. And again, that's just to do with their absorbency. And some, I mean, rice paper and calligraphy paper are very thin papers, but they pick up the um, paint very well. So you can't really judge it by the thickness either you just get used to what you like what you use most of and you just adapt to it you put on less paint more paint you leave it on for longer shorter you know you just adapt to to using the different types of paper and you also get a different type of look it can be subtle the differences but different types of papers do the, the paint has a different texture. It can have a slightly different um, shade to it, consistency to it um, with the different types of paper that you use. So I've put far too much paint on here, so I'm just rolling the excess off. I do this quite a lot. I'll either put on too much or too little. Too little normally because I'm trying to save money <laughs> and I'm just using the tissue paper again and it's just to show you you know about layering that you can layer obviously the orange paint on that tissue paper was dry before we used it again for the yellow paint now the tissue paper will not take lots of layers so I'm being gentler with it than I was the first time round when I used it. The temperature and humidity of the environment that you're working in also affects how quickly the paint dries. Now I think it's the central heating but I've found over the winter that the paint is drying very fast and I do think it's because all the radiators in the house are on. 
So I'm finding that there's more remnants of paint left on the gel plate. So this is the fluid acrylics and it's really just to show you the, you know, the difference of how they look. They dry faster and I also find that when I'm using the fluid paints that it's better not to have, it's better to have a clean brayer because I find if I've got heavy body paint on the brayer and then use it for the fluids that all the fluid paint sticks to my brayer rather than the jelly plate. But I definitely um, prefer to use heavy body paint, but it is interesting to see the variety that you can add in because the fluid paint and the heavy body paint do give re different results. And that can only be a good thing for us to see those different um, varieties within our artwork. And I have noticed that you can get slight cellular effects like you do with pore painting with the fluid paint on the gel plate. And that's probably something that could be explored further. So I'm just going to add some fluid paint on to lift that fluid paint off the gel plate. I just thought it was important to show you that there's different types of acrylic paint that can be used on the gel plate. Now, this is an old textbook and these papers are very good quality. They're very strong, they're very sturdy and they can take lots of layers. So a lot of the time these... Um, old textbooks don't have, um, they're not worth anything. So pick one of them up from a charity shop that's got good strong paper inside them and that'll give you all the practice you need in the jelly plate. <laughs> so acrylic paint is the main medium that is used on the jelly plate. However, there are different mediums that you can use to add more variety and, you know, open up more possibilities of what you can do on the plate. So that was a permanent marker. This is Posca pen, water soluble oil pastels. Now oil pastels that are not water soluble, i.e. normal, um, actually provide a resist on the jelly plate. So that can be used to decide where your paint will and will not go on the paper. Now, there is resist techniques and image transfer techniques that I have not added into this video. I'll do a separate video for them. Um, this is Pan Pastels by Golden as well. So like you say, there are certain media that you put on your gel plate and it will stain your gel plate um, but you, your gel plate will still be usable. I find these items are okay on the gel plate um, and they come off with baby oil. So generally what I do is I let them dry in and then I'll lift them off with a layer of acrylic paint. I do find with the Posca pens though that they do stay wet for a long enough time that if you were doing a fairly simple drawing with them, you could probably lift that back off the jelly plate without needing to use a layer of paint. Put a bit of fluid paint at the bottom and heavy body at the top. So the heavy body has lifted more off, but I do think that my layer of fluid paint was a bit thin. So what we're left with is what they call a ghost print, where you can lift what's left. And often the ghost print is where the magic happens, where it, there's just something magical about it. And it gives that printmaking look that makes it special. I also used alcohol markers on the plate 
there as well. And I find the alcohol markers and alcohol inks can make your plate quite dry and I find they're more likely to cause your paper to tear and that they can discolour your plate over time. However, I think they're still worth using and they give added effects that really you wouldn't get from anything else. Now that is a wooden tag that I'm using as a barren. A barren is just something that helps sort of put an even pressure across the gel plate and to lift the paint off. Um, ideally, you would use the back of a wooden spoon or a proper barren, but I'm just using what I have to hand. So I'm just cleaning the plate off again with the baby oil. Next, we're going to do the talk about the registration plate. Um, I did attempt to make one for the video and one of my Posca pens leaked everywhere. So the registration plate helps when you are layering different um, layers of paint from the gel plate onto the same piece of paper. You can purchase a registration plate from the gel plate manufacturers and there are different ways that people make a registration plate. Mine's is a piece of paper that has, this is an A5 plate. So I've basically marked out the purple square as the size of the A5 paper. And then I've cut out the centre for the gel plate to sit in. And that is it. That's my version of a registration plate. And you will find a version that works for you. So this time we're going to put a layer of paint down on the jelly plate and then we're going to use found objects to add texture. So in my case I am using packaging that comes in parcels so that's corrugated cardboard, bubble wrap and I use some special IKEA packaging that I love. <laughs> And then this is a silicon wedge colour shaper and I'm just adding in some lines with that. And then we'll pull that. I don't really need the registration plate here but I just wanted to show you it going on and off. Although it is handy if I've put that sheet of paper on properly if I want to use it again. It means that the next layer will go on in the same position. So with regards to the time that the paper is left on the jelly plate for. Like we've already discussed, there's lots of factors involved that you just need to learn as you go. However, I generally find the more layers that I put on and the thicker the layer of paint and the poorer, you know, absorbency of the paper, like the tissue paper, generally do need longer on the gel plate. So, Stencils, I think, are one of the most exciting things to use on the gel plate. Um, people use prints for lots of different reasons. I make full pictures. You can make collage papers. People make cards with them. So there's different ways to use the stencil on the jelly plate. So in this case, I am using the holes of the stencils to create the picture that I want to create here. Um, now, tissue paper is excellent for removing paint from these holes because it's thin and it's flexible and it can fit into little nooks and crannies. Whereas your thicker paper, you know, it just can't get into those smaller a edgy, smaller areas and give such a clear image. But I was happy with that one. So this is another way to use it. So we've been left with the a picture. The stencil has created a picture on the gel plate. So that green layer has been left to dry. And then we're going to pick it up onto another sheet of paper. 
which could already have an image on it or not. And the red layer will pull the green layer off of the jelly plate. Now, because there's two layers on here, it generally will take a little bit longer than just your single layer. Another thing to consider as you get to know your paints and your paper and different methods of using the gel plate is the difference between transparency and opaque paints. So quite often you want, it's good to start off with the more transparent colours because then layers that are put on after will show through. But if you've got a very intricate stencil sort of drawing that you're wanting to show through, then you want to use an opaque paint. Like, for example, that honeycomb stencil, I would use, um, if I just wanted that honeycomb shape, I would use, you know, an opaque dark colour, most likely. But these are the things that you start to pick up the more you use the gel plate. And I think that's why it's important to start off with your cheaper products, because you need to do lots and lots and lots to find what you want to use the gel plate for and you know to for it to suit your needs i also think it's important to push it to failure so that you can um find out its limitations so that you know what you can and can't do on it so this is a more complex I don't want to use the word advanced, but this is what you do to try and push it to failure. You just do use your textures, your stencils, your mixed media. You use them all together and you just see what can be achieved or not achieved with it. And this is why you use your cheap papers, because you literally can use so many in one sitting. Now you could see there that that paper was actually buckling because the wetness does, you know, it affects the paper. But I don't mind that because I use that. This is all about learning, learning, learning. Use the good paper for when you are trying, you know, once you've got to know techniques, then use the good paper. The more layers you put on, you do want to keep your paint layers quite thin. Basically, the thicker the paint layers, the longer they take to dry. And the more layers on the gel plate, the longer it takes to dry. So you'll see, I think we do three or four layers on this one. And each layer needs a longer drying time. Now, generally, the paint will have a sheen on it, a shininess to it. And as it dries, it becomes more matte. Um, I do use a metallic paint, so even that, it doesn't become matte, but it does lose some of its sheen when it's dry. So that was me adding textures, and that was another way to use your stencil. So I'm using the stencil to add in texture. So what we've got is we haven't completely removed paint or just used one part of the paint. What we've done is we've created almost different tones. You know, we have created a less saturated area and a more saturated area to create the picture of the stencil if that makes sense. Now, this was a perforated pad of watercolour paper um, that I just kept to use to create texture on the jelly plate. So the first layer on the gel plate here was an opaque paint. So even though the layer was thin, it's still going to have quite a strong presence and 
on the paper when it's pulled. So I'm going to use pale blue to lift the whole picture off the gel plate. But because the first layer was opaque, the pale blue does not come through very strongly. And overall, it's a very subtle effect that we've created. And you'll see it when it's pulled exactly what it is that I mean. I've also been using photocopier paper for the majority of these um, gel prints as well. So just cheap paper. You want the top layer as well to be quite thin to lift it all off. If it's too thick, then the paper cannot, it's not strong enough to pull it all off. That had sat for quite a while, like maybe five minutes before I pulled it off. But do you see what I mean? The fact is that pale blue hardly comes through at all. So this is a transparent paint that we're using. Um, and we'll see if we can get more of the layers showing through this time. So this is the tissue paper I was talking about, about being able to remove more of the paint and getting a clearer image. And you've seen how easy that was. And we've been left with the picture of the stencil. Now this is another transparent paint. I have a roll-off sheet at the side for the brayer. Um, generally, if I'm going to be using different colours quite a lot, I, I roll it off between every shot. That is just that colour shaper, silicon wedge, I'm just putting some lines on with. And that is a scoring tool, so it's got a little ball at the end. So it's blunt. And I, was just, I actually wrote hello on it. <laughs> now, I'm using this paper as a... These layers are dry before I put on the next layer. I'm using the paper as a mask. So, basically, it's so that this silver paint only goes on certain parts of the gel plate. Um, but I got lucky with the paper. I actually should have been more careful because I could have lifted the paint. It was underneath with that tissue paper but fortunately I didn't so again I'm just adding texture with the stencils so this time we're actually going to get two prints from this one um, layering on the gel plate because I'm going to lift this off with stencils on top of another print. So this is opaque turquoise. And again, don't overly think about what's opaque and what's translucent. You actually just get to know your own paints and you get to know what works best and what, what layer. It just comes naturally. And I do think different brands of paint behave differently as well. So, this has been lifted off through the stencil, and you'll see it. It's very subtle, but the turquoise has got a lot of depth in it. And when I lift it off, you'll see what I mean. But... A lot of the paint got left behind in the smaller nooks and crannies of the stencils. Fluid paints helps with that, actually. If I'd put a more fluid paint on top to lift this, that would have helped lift more out of those leaves. So, I haven't showed you. No, I do. I'll bring it back. You can see there, that's not just turquoise hexagons and leaf shapes. There's lots going on in it. So it almost gives it an autumnal look and it gives the leaves more, well, leaves naturally are not just one block colour. So that's what we've achieved 
by using those different layers and then using the stencil to pull it. So this does not work well. The picture underneath was too strong for what's went on top. But we're going to we're going to try and rescue it. Now you can make your own stencils using sheets of acetate or um plastic stationery, you know, like dividers and little plastic pockets that you put papers in because you can cut them with scissors. Now these don't last forever. Um but you do get you do get a lot of a sh lot of shots out of them. I mean, I've had these for months and they're okay. I've also learned most of what I do is I, I it's picking it up from other people. The methods that they use with the jelly plate. And that's the one thing to remember. There is no right or wrong as such. You just find your own way and experiment and push it to its limits of what can, you know, you can do it. How many layers can you do? Well, the only way you're going to find out is by doing too many. So I'm also going to put a list on YouTube of my kind of, what I think the jelly print, the jelly plate channels that have inspired me the most. And this is another way to use your stencils on the gel plate. So they were put on top of an empty gel plate and then we're painting over the top of them. And then we'll lift them off and we'll be left with a picture created by the stencils, but it's in a different way. Because there's lots of little stencils, um, I'm using the scoring tool to take them off. Although I do get my finger in there and touch parts of the paint. But I think that's one of the beauties of the gel plate is the little errors and flaws. So ideally I should have left the paper on this for longer than I did and um, because the paper already had a lot of layers on it and then I'm putting another layer on top and I just didn't leave it on long enough um, because I'm trying to counteract the busyness and the messiness I really could have done with some solid lines that's me checking I've not left any stencils And because there was lots of layers on it already, it probably wouldn't have ripped. I should have left it longer. See the way that I would have preferred that to be a more solid, dark colour. Anyway, that's the end of this little video. So thank you very much for watching. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye.